Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Fearless Brand Leaders. Today, we're sitting with Ron Pomerantz, Vice President of Marketing and Creative Disney Channel. Ron, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for spending me. some time with us. Sure. Tell me, um, in your opinion, how Disney Channel is going to stay relevant for years to come. You know, Disney's been around since 1923. Uh, we're in the business of storytelling. We're yeah. in the business of magic. Um, and by magic, I don't mean like hocus pocus. Mm -hmm. I mean the magic of wonderment and true amazement. You know, when you, you look at the parks and families, we show the joy in the face. We don't show the joy in what they see, and that is timeless. So I think as long as we are in the places where kids are, we will be relevant. Um, you know, I think this is probably not new news to you, but the entertainment business is terribly hit and miss. Um, with so many successful shows on your roster, you know, Disney Channel seems to have figured out some sort of secret formula. Um, can you share with us maybe what it is? Yeah, sure. I don't think it's a secret formula. Um, it's a formula uh, in the sense that we are a brand and we follow our brand attributes. Mm -hmm. Our main promises are believe in yourself, celebrate family, express yourself, um, made just for you. So all of our programming and our branding reflect those promises. Um, every show that is on our air, you can see the element of that in it. Um, there are times where you're in the zeitgeist more than other times, yeah. um, but I think the product is always very true. Um, it takes a really bold brand to compete for TV fans in the US. How have you changed the nature of what you do, and how is it paying off? Well, we have a very different kind of challenge than most television networks do um, for three reasons. Um, our demographic, our key demographic is 6 to 14. Mm -hmm. most, um, most internet sites are age-gated, like the Facebooks, the Twitters, Snapchat, to 13 and up. Um, and every country has their own laws in terms of how you should broadcast kids. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly looking to innovate around all of these things. Um, getting hashtags on our air. Yeah. You know, it's such a simple thing. That's the currency that kids are dealing with, but that is an age-gated world. Mm -hmm. So we do different things. We try and be authentic in the spaces that we can play in. Yeah. You know, because if you're not authentic in them, you come across as lame, yeah. and that's not going to build brand. Mm -hmm. um, so we're constantly innovating um, and looking at the changing landscape. And I know from talking beforehand, television itself is changing so drastically. Definitely. Keeping up with it mm -hmm. is a job in and of itself. And that, that leads nicely into um, the next question that I had for you with regard to, you know, and I don't want to be a downer here, but um, I think some people might actually say, you know, the traditional cable TV business model is dying this like slow, inevitable death. I mean, would you agree with that? Um, I agree with it going through a transition, and a lot of people would say death is a transition. <laughs> so I'm going to take the transition route. Okay. Um, I think linear television has changed. Uh, you don't experience television the way you used to. Mm -hmm. uh, we all don't. DVRs um, changed the landscape dramatically. Time shifting changed it dramatically. Um, your content, and that's, that's the beauty of Disney's content, can live many places, and it still has to have that Disney experience. I'm very lucky that I work for a commercial-free network. Mm -hmm. So we get about nine minutes of branding an hour to promote and perpetuate our promises. Yeah. When you're looking at us not on our linear channel, the shows are the ambassadors to those promises. So it's challenging, it's changing. Um, business models are changing, mm -hmm. but I don't think television is dying. I still think television will always be television. I don't think we'll always call it that. So is there anything specifically, you know, from a tactics perspective that you would say is innovative that you guys are doing in that nine minutes? I'm a huge fan of the clock, the broadcasting clock. Um, you really want to create an environment that sustains and entertains and make sure that the breaks are equally engaging as the programming. 
Uh, one of the things that we're doing, uh, sort of off of one of your other questions, is allowing kids to be a little more authentic and contribute to our air. So we recently relaunched with a new global package that's footage based instead of graphics based that enables each country to customize for their country. That grew from sort of presentational to contribution. Uh, using a couple of different pieces, we now solicit um, from the kids materials, uh, whether it be a series like Make Your Mark, Show How You're Influencing the World, um, or uh, The Time I, which is an anthology storytelling interstitial that is about small moments in kids' lives. Um, so we're allowing the kids to be authentic, to be vocal, to be heard. Um, and I think that's the most, it's the most important thing in childhood is to be seen and heard. And here we are a network that is for kids. So by spinning it back to them, I think it keeps it relevant and it keeps it real. That's all I have for you today, Ron. I appreciate you taking the time to share with us and um, I look forward to seeing where everything goes. Um, it's been a great honor to meet you and spend a little bit of time together. My pleasure. So uh, all the best for the rest of the time here. Um, and that's it for us. So please in tune in next week for another episode of Fearless Brand Leaders. Until then, stay fearless.